Hello friends and a very happy new year to all. So today we are back with another and first webinar for the year. And today's topic uh, for the webinar is trending as it will change the coming future or I can say it has already started changing. So the topic for today uh, is becoming a metaverse creator, limitless creativity and opportunities. And to do this, we have Omkar all the way from Germany who is with us to guide us everything about metaverse so omkar is the founder and ceo of uh, miracle.io uh, now io stands for input and output uh, an international team of technology leaders and education experts from harvard and sanford uh, leadership omkar carries 10 years of uh, years of deep industry expert in metaverse ai and immersive mobile technologies across diverse verticals such as education fintech health and e-commerce and guys we are really uh, very lucky that he will be joining and guiding us through his experience so now the time has come to call him on the stage so i would like omkar to be on the stage hello omkar nice Hi, to see you. thank you for having me here yeah, yeah nice to see you back <clears throat> so uh, yeah i know uh, omkar since uh, quite a few uh, time and uh, even uh, Omkar knows that even I am eagerly uh, getting into the meta, right? I have shared some of the content of uh, me and he has guided me a lot and I'm working on it. And soon I will be sharing the updated versions with him. Let's uh, see how uh, the things goes. So yeah, Omkar, <coughs> thank you for joining and thank you for the time. Pleasure is all mine and uh, thank you for having me. It's always great to see what uh, Framebox does with, you know, all of its network and, you know, making sure that all the students get access to the right kind of knowledge, the right kind of exposure to, you know, emerging technologies, because right. the builders of the future are the ones who are studying right now. And I think yes, there's correct. a lot for them to learn. Correct, correct, correct. So, uh, Omkar, what uh, uh, will be the webinar uh, for today all about? So today I want to talk about the metaverse and how one can become a creator in the metaverse. So there's a lot of companies building in the metaverse. You may have heard of them. Um, mm -hmm. And one thing is, of course, consuming things that have been created in the metaverse. But the second thing is actually creating things in the metaverse yourself. Instead of being just a consumer, you can become a creator. And not only, of course, hone your professional skills, but also be able to uh, earn like revenue and uh, income and all of these things and uh, like basically take part in the creation of a completely new world. So I'll be talking a bit about the creativity um, possibilities and the world building opportunities that exist in the metaverse today. Okay, great. Sounds really great. So <coughs> for becoming a creator, does someone uh, has to invest something or it's totally free? So there are quite a, a few tools out there that let you uh, try some things out. Of course, there are some paid tools as well that make a, make life a lot easier for us. Yeah. But all that is asked of you, if you want to become a creator, is having limitless creativity and putting in the hard work for it. I think these are the two prerequisites and these are the two uh, non-negotiable things, I would say, that are required. Right. Everything else, there are many options for. And of course, uh, you know, there are many courses out there that teach you of, of, about these things as well. Um, I think you often do get what you paid for. I mean, if you're paying something for a course, then of course that course will make sure that uh, everything that you get and understand in that course maybe will be very relevant to you. Otherwise, you can also study online. There are a lot of things, you know, uh, on YouTube University, as they call it. But it's hard to find the right thing and it's, it's, it's hard to find the right uh, sources for learning these things. So resources are there. There are There's a lot happening. But uh, yeah, the only two things that uh, is, are required of a creator are, like I said, uh, creativity and hard work. Okay, great. I'm sure you must be having some presentation. So I'm extremely sorry if I am asking you some uh, silly questions. Because no. after going through the uh, presentation, uh, many of my doubts will be clear. And many of the viewers' doubts will be clear. And uh, even if there uh, are some uh, doubts after going through the presentation, then definitely I and I will also like our viewers to ask the uh, questions anytime, right? So I think <coughs> now is the time you can uh, start uh, showing us what you have and sure. uh, the stage is yours. You can uh, take it from here. Thank you. Thank you, Amit. And uh, yeah, 
let's go let's get going sure so yeah great so i think everyone can see my screen and um, today like i said i'll be talking a bit about becoming a metaverse creator uh, where you'll be able to explore your limitless creativity and opportunities to build a new world and uh, it's it's a joy and an honor to do it together with framebox and uh, share our ideas and uh, uh, with the framebox community out here so amit has already have had a short introduction about me so maybe i'll quickly run through it i'm the founder ceo of miracle.io and uh, we are headquartered in germany with a team across germany india and the us and uh, this team includes technology leaders education experts from harvard and stanford leadership and what we do is we are building the real world metaverse of education that's how i think about it so you with miracle.io you can unlock learning by doing in the world that you're in so at your home in your classroom anywhere outside for that matter so that's that, that's what we do and that's what we build so, so this is okay, yes okay. so it's totally uh, uh, for educational purpose right or yes primarily for education but we are also have some gamification aspects to it so there are some uh, educational okay. puzzles for example okay. So for educational purpose, uh, does it a uh, mixed reality or it's totally metaverse? So we use both. We have the mixed reality part, which blends two realities. So the physical world as well as a virtual world that in okay. blends seamlessly. And we also have a full virtual version, like in full VR, okay. which creates the environment for you and also the uh, interactions within. So we have both versions for that can run on all kinds of mobile devices. So okay. We want to make sure that every student is able to access it in right. whatever form right. they can. Right. Yeah. So that's a quick glance at our team. So we have uh, people from Harvard and Stanford, like for, for example, Dr. Koslin. We have people from uh, Humboldt University in Germany, like Dr. Killian. We have people like Smita who have worked with uh, the Indian government. And most importantly, we have a team of 15 plus people across the world in technology, research, development, design, and growth. So that's like a quick overview about who we are. Um, now, before we jump into the topic about how to become a creator, I wanted all of us to understand about what is it that the metaverse is about? Like, what exactly is it, right? Okay. So if there are some people on, on the stream who may have answers to this question, please feel free to write in the chat. Maybe we can also include your answers uh, in the presentation. But um, what is the metaverse exactly about? Right. So the metaverse is basically the next generation of the internet that is mostly 3D, mostly interactive, and mostly immersive. Now, let's break it down one by one, right? So the next generation of the internet. So, so far the internet that we have today has to do with basically two dimensional content for the most part, right? So you have pages that you can scroll up and down, maybe left and right. Maybe you have videos that you can uh, play, pause and go on. And you can, you of course, type comments and also sort of interact with it, but it's not 3D. Like forget mostly, it's not 3D at all for the most part, right? So it's mostly not 3D is how I like to think about it, the generation of internet today. So the next generation of internet is mostly 3D and therefore uh, mostly immersive because of that. So you, the real world is 3D, right? So you have uh, three dimensions that we, uh, three dimensions of space that we live in. And the next generation of internet therefore is closer to reality. And therefore the term reality comes a lot in these kind of terms. And it's mostly interactive as well. Interactive being you can manipulate objects as you do in real life, also in this metaverse, the next generation of the internet. So okay. instead of just you consuming it, you can also manipulate uh, the, these objects yourself. So it's, it's a lot of words, it's a lot of descriptions, and therefore I've tried to simplify the definition of it. There is no real definition of the metaverse yet because it's so early and uh, there are so many interpretations of it. So um, who owns the metaverse? It's an important question. Who runs this show? And it's it's a lot. The answer to this question is also the answer to the question, who owns the internet today? Does anyone know about this? Like who the owner of the internet today is? 
guys, if you have the answer, you can just. <coughs> so the owner of the internet today is no one, right? All of us collectively own the internet, which means that all of us, you, me, everyone else in the world, collectively owns the internet. Similarly, nobody individually owns the metaverse. So the metaverse is collectively owned, created, and consumed by all of us, right? Oh. So uh, content in the metaverse is created. Uh, it is uh, consumed. The, the person who created that content automatically de facto is the owner of that content. But it's consumed by all of us, or it is expected to be consumed by all of us, just like today's internet. So how do you keep things together? Like, how do you make sure that, um, you know, everything that all of these different people and different organizations are creating is working well and speaking well, the same language to each other. And that's where the Metaverse Standards Forum comes into the picture. It's a group of companies that includes uh, Meta, Microsoft, Nvidia, Sony, Adobe, Miracle.io ourselves as well. Uh, and we are collectively shaping how we can interact in the metaverse safely and reliably. So there are many, many factors about how to interoperate between different uh, organizations, metaverses, and so on. So there are many, many topics that come up over here. And as you can see, it's a huge list of companies, and this is just one part of it, right? Yeah. So, I mean, bonus points for spotting Miracle.io in this list. Um, but you can see that we have Microsoft, we have uh, NVIDIA, we have Nestle, we have um, um, Nokia. We have quite a few organizations that are in this uh, Metaverse Standards Forum, and we are one of them as well. Now, with all of these organizations, there are almost 1,000 plus organizations in the Metaverse Standards Forum, and more are being added um, literally every day. Right? Mm -hmm. so all of these organizations are building in the Metaverse, and naturally, uh, all of these organizations are looking for employees, for people who can build with them in the Metaverse, so Metaverse creators, basically. So a whole new industry is opening up when it comes to the metaverse. So how can you be a creator in the metaverse? And to answer that question, I'd like to start with an important number, which is the metaverse job market is expected to hit $800 billion by 2024. So basically by the end of next year, that's the size of the market, $800 billion. That's huge. And it's, yeah, it's massive, and uh, that's that's a lot of um, it, it. It's huge. The potential is huge, and uh, it it completely opens up a new field completely. So it also opens up new roles for the creators of tomorrow. And uh, maybe let's explore some roles about what this new metaverse, what kind of new jobs, job profiles, roles does it create for us? Right. So I start. I wanted to start with a crucial one. It's about being metaverse. Uh, it's about being a metaverse architect, right? So that's one of the most important roles when it comes to uh, building in the metaverse. And uh, a metaverse architect is kind of similar to a real world architect. Like an architect in the real world is um, sort of thinking about how different uh, structures, how different buildings, monuments, and objects in the environment they sit well together and you know how they interact with each other perhaps or how they look together with each other and how physical space can be utilized in a good manner uh, so similarly a metaverse architect thinks uh, or is, is expected to think in the same way they're expected to transform a three-dimensional space mm -hmm. into something more immersive something more interactive something more memorable and the goal is to build engagement through interactions with these monuments buildings objects for metaverse use cases. So of course it depends from use case to use case. Uh, a tourism uh, metaverse use case would be very different from an education metaverse use case. Or um, you know, a show car showroom metaverse would be very different from, let's say, um, a live concert sort of a use case. So there are many, many uh, different kinds of roles and projects that sort of come up for this kind of a role as well. The second one, and this is something you may have heard of, is uh, about avatar clothing stylists. Correct. So this, uh, like, so maybe I'll start with what avatars are. So avatars are basically, it comes from uh, the Sanskrit word avatar, uh, which is to be, which means identity essentially, or uh, sh form or shape, right? 
So um, in the metaverse, when you interact with, uh, when you're in a virtual space with multiple pe other people, other users, uh, the identity that you hold is that of an avatar. So it's not, you, you can choose to have, of course, your real uh, identity over there, but you can also uh, adopt an alias, like, okay. a, uh, like a, an online identity, basically. And um, over here, you can, of course, choose how that avatar looks, how, how it, um, uh, what kind of clothes it has, what kind of apparel it has, what kind of uh, style you want to sort of have uh, the avatar for. Even in some scenarios, you can even choose whether the avatar is a human, animal, alien, or a mix of all of these things also, right? So there are, again, within avatars itself, the possibilities are endless. And depending on what avatar you have, how it would look, how it would, uh, you know, what kind of clothes it would wear, all of these things also come up. So in metaverse fashion um, use cases, this is something that is uh, popping up quite a lot. So there are entire companies that are just focusing on building avatars or just focusing on having virtual fabrics, for example, uh, for clothing and virtual materials and all of these things. So there's a lot happening in this space um, as well. Now, one of the next role is uh, AR, VR engineer. So this is um, basically building the technological foundation for the metaverse to be built on top of it, right? Because the right technology is important and crucial to a seamless user experience. And uh, that's, this, is, this is basically, uh, many companies call it spatial computing engineering. So basically com being able to compute a physical space that you're in and try to make sense out of it. So that's the AR part. Or second, um, make sense out of a virtual uh, space to dynamically uh, evolve it, essentially. So there are many use cases and aspects over here. But this requires a lot of abstract thinking, a lot of creativity and a lot of logical uh, and uh, rational analysis, essentially. This, this is what we, or how I would define my role uh, as the closest, I would say, while we work at miracle.io. Um, it's about making sense out of any physical space, be it your home, my home, your office, my office, the outside playground that you are closest to, or the park that I'm closest to in Berlin. So it, it's fully dynamic. And that's what the beauty of uh, this sort of a role is, that it lets you build something that is truly, truly very immersive and innovative at the same time. Um, then <clears throat> there's something called as Metaverse Event Manager. This is also a role that has been popping up a lot, in, especially in the last year. So there have been many events that have happened in the Metaverse. Uh, I don't know if you recently heard about um, uh, this band called Gorillas, they are one of the, um, they, I think they came around somewhere in the 90s, late 90s, early 2000s. And they are a fully, they have always been a fully virtual band. So even their music videos were basically animated characters uh, at all times. Mm -hmm. So they recently did uh, an augmented reality concert in London, I believe, um, where if you were there in that physical space at that point in time, and uh, you could basically see the gorillas perform um, in that geographical location at I that time yes, through yes, yes. Uh, mixed reality technology. Um, but if you came the next day, you wouldn't see it, for example. Mm -hmm. So these kind of things, is, this, this is an example of a metaverse event. Mm -hmm. There are many such events happening. There are many <clears throat> Web3 events, you know, mm -hmm. talking about blockchain, crypto, all of these sort of use cases. And... Uh, all of these are, you know, typically in a uh, in an online virtual space mm -hmm. um, where there are many people who are joining. So there are th there's a lot of organizing, as um, is the case also with the real event. Like you need to make sure that people have the right authentication, the right passes. Uh, people are entertained enough. People are, you know, uh, crowd control is a real thing also in these kind of events. <laughs> So Metaverse Event Manager sort of takes care of these things. They're expected to be familiar with the environment. They're expected to be familiar with the tools. So there are many, many uh, factors over here that come into play. That's one more role. Uh, another role that uh, has been there, this, this role is not new, of course. The 3D game designer role has been there for quite some time. But more and more now, uh, creating game worlds, puzzles, interactions within the metaverse or within a virtual environment, generally speaking, is something that has been popping up quite a lot. And um, 
since gaming is one of the biggest industries in the metaverse and has been continuing to grow uh, this is something uh, the 3d game designers sort of a role is something that is hugely in demand in fact um, at our company as well like we um, are constantly on the lookout for uh, talented 3d game designers who we can work with. and uh, it's always a struggle to find the best uh, 3d designers for us and uh, therefore we also see that this is a very valuable uh, career to follow. Correct. And uh, again, a uh, completely new role, Metaverse Safety Manager, right? So safety as in, uh, uh, you know, like you need safety in real physical spaces. Also in the Metaverse, you need uh, safety because digital safety today uh, is a very, very important factor. Like you don't want account credentials to be hacked. You don't want, um, uh, you know, sensitive data to be leaked. And especially, you know, because some people sometimes can be very mean, you don't want online bullying uh, to have, uh, you know, bad effect on people's people's user experiences. Because otherwise, if people have a bad experience in the metaverse that you are managing, then they won't come back. Uh, you don't want that. So a metaverse safety manager basically is uh, taking care of these kind of things, making sure that users have a good experience um, in that environment. And... Uh, basically prevent uh, or rather ensure digital safety and prevent online bullying and so on. So these kind of things and many more, there are just two more clear examples. There are many other factors that come into picture when it comes to safety. Right. And mm -hmm. the list is endless, right? I could go on and on about these kind of roles, but you get an idea about a completely new world um, of roles, of uh, opportunities, of careers that open up that are completely different from what uh, even people from my generation had access to. Right? So I started my career as a software engineer, very like, I don't know, millions of others, you know, back in 2012, 13. And 10 years down the line, you know, I've sort of tried to be on the cutting edge of things. 2013, I was, I started off my career in AI and mobile. And uh, over the last 10 years, I've been across different industries in mobile. And now over the last two, three years, I've been in the metaverse building uh, technology for the metaverse tech in building experiences and metaverses of my own with my company. But people who start their career now, in, you know, today, in the next year, they have access to not only the roles that we had access to, but more of these roles, the more creative roles, the more um, the, the roles which let you um, let you sort of uh, take your creativity and take it to the next level and build something completely new from scratch. Correct. You know, instead of trying to build and maintain something that someone else has built, you get an opportunity to build something from scratch yourself based on the values that you hold close to you, your own. So these are the opportunities out there. And there are many, many more opportunities. There is a Metaverse storyteller. There is Metaverse chief Metaverse strategists. So there are also many companies have also hired Metaverse um uh metaverse c chief metaverse officers there is a cm cmvo now uh, like you've had ceo cto you know cpo coo and now there's cmvo as well as a part of uh c level <coughs> uh, organizations so companies like nike adidas i think they have already hired their chief metaverse strategists and chief metaverse officers so these are people who are taking uh, what is in the metaverse and applying it to these kind of use cases and companies. So that's a brief overview about the opportunities. Now, now that you've understood what the opportunities are like, right? I wanted to also uh, quickly show you what the how the metaverse is built. Like, what kind of technology do you use? Uh, you know, how do you go about it? So, like as uh, like we mentioned before. There's the basis of building the metaverse is with advanced AI technology, mainly extended reality, XR. So XR is an umbrella term that contains virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed, all of these kind of things. And that's what opens up a new world of possibilities. Okay. Now, I wanted to show you an example of how XR works. So this is an example of VR, virtual reality. And um, I'd like to quickly, it's a video of virtual meditation, right? I, unfortunately, I think we are not able to stream audio, but I can quickly play the video 
and you'll get an understanding of how this looks. You see that this is a fully virtually created environment and the sand is virtual, the trees are virtual, um, the water is virtual, the sky, um, everything is fully, fully virtual. And uh, of course, this is best experienced through some sort of a headset, which is fully immersive. So it cuts off the reality that you're in and uh, lets you sort of be fully present in this sort of an environment. And um, you can see that there is a lot um, of detail, attention to detail over here, right? From lighting to the animals, the wind, to the way the leaves move. There is a lot. And, uh, you know, it looks like a simple short one minute clip, but probably takes ages to build something of that sort. It takes a lot of time and effort to master this, of course. And if you are uh, using the gadget, then the experience is totally different. Exactly. You know, walk exactly. on the sand, you can feel each and everything. Exactly. So with the with the virtual reality headsets, uh, it's definitely a completely different experience. Right. Um, yeah, so that's a quick example of a fully digitally constructed environment that may resemble physical reality. It may not always resemble physical reality. Right? Mm -hmm. So the beauty of virtual reality is that you can create environments that yeah, are in space, for example, or are in a completely different planet, for example. So these kind of things are um, very, very interesting and can uh, all interactions here take within play, take place within this virtual environment. Now, another example of XR is mixed reality. And this example that I wanted to show you is about real world education. So how mixed reality, which obviously, as the name suggests, is able to blend two worlds. So one is the physical world that we live in and a virtual world on top of it. So this is where things start to get really even more interesting, because now instead of you becoming just a consumer of a world that someone else has created, you get to choose the environment and you get to sort of play around with um, an experience within that environment. And uh, this is a completely different um, way of experiencing this kind of uh, experiences. So uh, I wanted to show you a video and this kind of also has a smooth segue into what we do and an example of what we and Miracle.io do. So this is an example of Miracle.io um, and how we actually uh, build virtual reality experiences, right? So you have this in the classroom where mm -hmm. students are learning about the structure of the atom. And um, for example, this is in a park, uh, learning about the dispersion of light. Mm -hmm. And you can see that these kind of science puzzles can be set up in any corner of the world, whether it's on the top of a mountain, whether it's in a classroom, whether it's in a park, whether it's in an office. And this is something that becomes really powerful because it helps educators attract and engage learners. It helps learners learn better because they're learning by doing it themselves instead of just reading or watching a video. Right? And uh, you can really see that how putting things together yourself is one of the best ways of learning. And that's the real effects of mixed reality in society today. So this is <clears throat> this is some footage from uh, Vidyanidhi High School, which is in Mumbai. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what we do. Uh, we gamify education. We make education fun and uh, engaging and exciting. And basically, that's how we are able to uh, use mixed reality through everyday mobile devices. No special hardware. And uh, the student takes part in the creation of the learning experience. The student themselves uh, becomes a creator because they choose how to do it. They choose which angles to take, they choose, um, you know, uh, where they want to set up this learning experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they take part in the creation process themselves. Uh, I wanted to show you one more example of um, how virtual or rather mixed reality is used to help learners improve their confidence with complex procedures, right? So let's have uh, another look at 
um, this time it's a drone video. So this time it's about how a complex equip piece of equipment or you know any kind of uh, gadget, for example, is put together, is assembled. So you can see over here that the first part is about understanding and seeing how uh, this drone uh, is basically set up together. And then it's about understanding different parts of it. This is the exploded view, basically, of um, this gadget over here. And the user can manipulate that gadget based on you know how they want to see it. They can either walk on the other side of the table or they can move the drone around and understand it. Correct. Now, the fun begins when you put the, this drone together yourself. That's when the real fun begins, right? So one thing is watching it, but the second thing is actually you putting it together. And so therefore, the drone parts set up uh, are set up in front of you for you to mm. assemble the drone yourself. Okay. So it's a it's a bit like Legos, um, but putting them together is where mm. you really uh, can enjoy it. So we have seen it with like Iron Man. Exactly, exactly. So this is sci-fi coming to life. Uh, right, that we right. are able to do, uh, uh, you know, with Miracle.io, the technology and the methods that we use. It's a very creative way of putting, uh, you know, making learning fun again, because learning is something that people don't associate fun with learning because of Correct. the methods that we use today. But if we use and these kind of methods. Correct. And understanding becomes more easier. Exactly. Exactly. So that's basically how, uh, you know, you learn how to put mm -hmm. drones together. So you can see that at all points, you have also these instructions popping along. So mm -hmm. whenever you're stuck at some point, uh, you're always uh, like, there's always the, the learning experience supports you along the way. And of course you can view drone parts again to get an orientation of what is where and so on. And um, yeah, this way you can also learn how to put together a drone. Even if you don't have a drone, by the time you get a drone, you're more confident about how to put it together and therefore you're less likely to damage the drone. And, uh, you know, this is very valuable in training scenarios in companies, for example, which manufacture drones or which use drones as a part of their operations. Mm -hmm. So over there, because drones are expensive, they can train their people and new joiners with this kind of technology and um, therefore minimize the training cost and minimize the damage that may be caused due to new joiners not knowing how to operate these things. But there are many, very many use cases for these kind of, uh, you know, metaverse training uh, scenarios as well. And in our uh, inter interpretation of the metaverse, we want to blend the real world and the virtual world. And that's exactly how we do it. That in this case, after you've assembled a drone, it then flies off in the real world that you're in. You may be outdoors, the drone flies off in the sky over there. So this is yet another example of how we at Miracle.io um, use mixed reality for education. Um, and with this, we want to say goodbye to memorization and hello to memorable. That's our slogan because education so far has been about memorization. But we want to say goodbye to that. And we want to rather make education memorable without needing to memorize it. And uh, that's just a quick um, example. So what I wanted to do is I also wanted to show you a live demo of how mixed reality actually looks. So, you know, when you look at these kind of presentations, mm -hmm. we think that this is very far away from today, right? Mm -hmm. But it's actually not. It's actually right here. People are using this in the real world today. And uh, I wanted to quickly show you how an example of this looks. So here we are. Um, I think you should be able to see my phone screen. Yes, and we are I... able to see the phone, yeah. Ah, okay, no, not anymore, I guess. Okay. Okay, now you're able to see it again. Right. Okay, cool. So I wanted to show you an example of how this technology actually works. So I'm going to transform this office that I am in into a science lab, uh, mm -hmm. which is one of the things that we do. So let's learn about how um, like microscopes in science labs uh, are prepared, like how slides are prepared for this microscope. Okay, okay, okay. 
So you can see that at all times, you're guided along the way about how to use this. Yeah. Right? So we are able to help you understand how, uh, how the environment around you is. So, so now we are able to start the lab over here. So now you can see that we have a full lab in front of us, right? Yes. So which did not exist in the real world, mm -hmm. but over here you have it. And now you can interact fully with it, right? So I can go close to it and I can pick up the tools and I can move around with mm -hmm. the tool in the real world, right? And I can use this tool to pick up the flower petal. And place it on the glass slide over here. Right now, the next step is for me to leave the tweezer so I can continue the rest of the activity. Now, I can leave this tweezer on this table, or I can go to the other room and leave it on a physical table. Yep. And I'm going to show you exactly that to demonstrate how this works. Okay. 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 Great. And then we come back and continue mm -hmm. the rest of the activity. So you can see that, you know, we are able to in involve the entire environment that you're in as a part of the activity. So the whole world becomes your canvas as a creator when you work with the metaverse. Now, I'm just going to com continue the rest of the activity. So this is the second part of the experiment, which involves more materials, more steps. You know, it's more complex in that sense. But this is what it looks like. Now, for the next step, I need to go and pick up the tweezers, which I left in the kitchen over there. So you can see that it tells me that there's a marker, the blue uh, indicator over there, that tells me that I need to go there and pick up the tweezer. Come back here, pick up the onion peel, place it on the wet slide, and so on. So this is how, this is another example of how this kind of technology uh, works. <clears throat> so that's about that's that's about building in the metaverse i'm just going to quickly close the door yes. so coming back to our uh, presentation so this gives us an idea of what it means to build in the metaverse right yes. it, it we we saw um different examples we saw vr meditation of course we saw uh, fixed reality education. We saw um, uh, drone examples, educational examples. We saw entertainment examples, gaming, of course, itself. We all are no strangers to these days. Uh, so all of these are fields in the metaverse that are booming right now and that uh, are actually looking for um, the right people with the right skills. Yes. So now is the time where you pick up these skills and become a metaverse creator yourself. Because imagine if you could use this kind of technology, not only are you just building things, but you're also you know, becoming a creator on YouTube or these kind of uh, um, streaming sort of platforms where imagine a teacher using uh, miracle.io, right? They are able to explain something that always has been in their mind, but they've never been able to explain it because the right visualization was not present. But with Miracle, they're able to uh, prepare a video out of it, help, help the students understand these things better. If you, if, you are a, uh, if you are in the gaming sort of um, field, if you're interested in that field, there is a lot of um, scenarios where you can build 3D models, you can build 3D architecture for games, um, and you can basically put these kind of your skills to the test over here and build something very valuable that entertains people um, you know, throughout the whole world. If you are in the fashion space or if you're in the event space, there are so many other opportunities for you as well. So in short, the opportunities are endless and the, the metaverse is already here. The question is, where are you, right? Correct. 
and that is something that uh, I think you know we all need to. It's, it's a question that we all should ask ourselves. So, speaking about speaking about questions, um, I think I'll I wanted to sort of also um, ask you if you have any questions, thoughts, ideas, opportunities that come to your mind about how you can become a metaverse creator mm -hmm. yourself. Well, I have a question uh, related uh, to this. Suppose a person who already knows the uh, concept of 3D texturing each and everything, right? And he's working somewhere or he is a student, he has completed the course. And there is the other uh, person who has just completed his 12th standard or he has just completed his uh, graduation. So uh, what will be the time duration taken for these both candidates? Mm -hmm. It be uh, tougher for the uh, person who has done a 12th or graduation because he does not have any prior uh, knowledge regarding the softwares or it will be uh, easier for the guy who has uh, the knowledge of each and everything. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the prerequisites, let me start with the prerequisites, right? So if let's say you're, you're pursuing some sort of a course uh, mm -hmm. about the metaverse, I think the fundamental prerequisites are for you to be able to be comfortable with some sort of image editing, video editing, uh, understanding 3D modeling or the basics of it, right? You don't need to be an expert in it. But if you know about these things, then it'll become easier for you to get into this sort of a field. At the same time, it doesn't take a long time for you to get familiar with these things. There are enough tools out there that are available that you are able to um, sort of pick up and learn. Right. Yeah. There are also courses that uh, you can take part in that will help you understand these things. But even if you don't have, you're not familiar with these kind of technologies, um, you can still like it'll just take a bit longer, perhaps because you need to pick up a few more things before. Mm -hmm. But by no means it should stop you from uh, pursuing this if you're interested in it. Because especially if you if you're in the twelfth or just finished twelfth. You're maybe 17 or 18 years old. This is the prime of your life, right? Got it. Um, this is when your brain is at the sharpest, your energy is at the peak. Um, you know, it doesn't get better than this when it comes to, uh, you know, human spirit and human energy. So now is the time. If you want to pick up something new, now is the time. Don't worry about what happened in the past, but, you know, think about what you can do in the future by doing something valuable today. So that, I think, you know, if you want to pick these things up, whether you're in 12th grade, whether you're in, um, uh, you know, you've done some course before, um, do it today is how I would put it. Of course, it might take longer if you have not had the prerequisites, but it will maybe take you three to four months more, maybe than someone who has learned uh, about 3D modeling and all of these things before. But uh, there are enough courses out there that have like a comprehensive coverage for these kind of things as well. Correct. Yeah, uh, I have a question from uh, the audience. Mm -hmm. uh, will the metaverse change the future of the gaming industry, as in Microsoft Flight Simulator, where the entire Earth is created virtually to teach you how to fly in a plane? Absolutely, absolutely. So, three D and you know immersive worlds in gaming is not new, right? We have been like the first 3D games came out at the beginning of um, this millennium. So 2000 yeah. something, you know, some of the first 3D games came out. So you had uh, GTA San Andreas, one of my favorite games. Um, you had uh, Fallout, you had Skyrim, you had Assassin's Creed, you had uh, Mass Effect. You had so many of these games which were completely fantastical worlds that were created in immersively in 3D, right? Flight Simulator, for example, is also um, a very good example. When the first um, Flight Simulator came out, it was already so good. And then today's Flight Simulator, it's like just next level. Right? Next level. Yeah. So imagine playing Flight Simulator with a VR headset. Right. So imagine doing something of that sort. So this way, not only are you, <clears throat> you're in the cockpit yourself. So you look around physically and you can see what is uh, on the right side of your plane. Yeah. You look around physically left, you can see what's on the left side of the plane. If you nose dive, the whole plane will, you know, <laughs> like the whole uh, field yeah. of view will follow what you are doing in the plane. 
in fact simulations have been used in pilot training for a very long time it's not something that is new um and it's a very good way of doing it because again it's a training and an education use case if you think about it right so because flight hours are very expensive and you of course don't want to have a pilot who has no flight hours but you also uh, you know want to find the right uh, balance between virtual training and real world training keep in mind that a no virtual world will be able to replace the real world right and i don't think any virtual world should even try because the real world is beautiful yes. but there are many things that you can do to add things to the real world things that are missing things that are not there things that the real world falls short of right so that's our philosophy about building the future but there are many many scenarios where full virtual scenarios are very valuable and you gave a very good example here uh, varad about um, flight simulator so definitely how we interact with computers is going to change with the metaverse gaming is just one use case out of them right okay. so i actually stopped gaming in the last couple of years because it was getting too immersive like you 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 know i i had to fight to not spend too much time uh, in gaming so now maybe i'll find a way to get back into it somehow but uh, definitely this the future is very exciting over there so yeah that was the question from varad and the next question is from uh, chirag sir uh, is it necessary to know coding in metaverse um it will give you an advantage but it's not necessary right like i said if you become a metaverse um event manager you don't need coding for it you need organization skills you need crowd control skills perhaps but maybe not coding as much you need knowledge <clears throat> of tools that you will use for the event but you don't need to code them yourself now if you want to build tools that the metaverse uses or if you want to build um let's say you want to build environments and you know content or interactions so with their coding is definitely valuable and generally coding helps you also think logically and sequentially um and you know it it helps you abstract things so it gives you a lot of other uh, transferable skills that you will use in many other sort of scenarios but um depending again on what kind of role you're picking up if if you're taking a designer sort of a role like a 3d modeler uh, there is coding to be done in 3d modeling as well but um, it's not necessary to do to build some uh, you know really beautiful 3d models or 3d environments so it's it's, it's not essential but it's beneficial is how i would answer the question correct yep that were the two questions uh, from the uh, audience mm -hmm. yep great any other questions from your side amit or from the framebox team side mm, that was the main question uh, from uh, my side and uh, i will be uh, connecting with you again and again because i want to learn uh, it and i want to learn it in a quick uh, session right Sure. So uh, yeah, I have uh, shown you the entire uh, center which uh, was in two metaverse. Right. And, yeah. That's so, another yeah. example actually of uh, VR, right? Mm -hmm. That how a physical space, a digital twin of a physical space, is created in the metaverse, where students can come in, uh, see the campus, uh, see you know certain things in the campus, and all of these things. There are many more things that Amit. uh said that he also wants to do and we'll be uh, discussing about how you know it can be taken even to the next level so it's it's great to see framebox sort of thinking out of the box over here and um really taking things to the next level like stepping ahead and you know making sure that the students are also getting exposed to these kind of modern and new technologies and um yeah we're very happy to also support framebox and the framebox community for these kind of Uh, emerging technology related things and education about it yes thank you thank you so much no problem samit mm -hmm. guys uh, if you have any uh, queries if you have any doubts if you have any questions uh, feel free to ask in the comment box yeah and if you want to try out miracle.io yourself on your mobile device you can scan this barcode and you can try it out what you just saw me demonstrating yourself 
So uh, again, this is completely for everyone, whether you're 15, whether you're 18, whether you're 20, 25, 30, 40, 50, we've made it for everyone. And every, mm -hmm. everyone is welcome to the metaverse with us, right? So the, you can scan this barcode or you can go to miracle.io and you will find how to download the app straight on your phone. There is no special hardware required. Your mobile device should be able to support um, what we've built, either in full XR mode, as you saw uh, in the real world, or in virtual mode where the virtual environment is created for you. So <clears throat> I thank everyone for attending today's session and their attention. And yeah, thank you, Amit and Frameworks team for thank having me today. So thank you so much, Omkar, for the time and uh, for the knowledge shared here. And I hope uh, there will be many uh, comments on the uh, channel. And hopefully, uh, if I don't have the answer to the comments, I will definitely get back to you. Absolutely. Happy to answer. So thank you so much. So guys, uh, that was for today. And uh, we will be uh, connecting uh, back next week, same time, same day. Uh, all the best. So happy new year again. And yep, signing off now. Thank you and happy new year. Goodbye. Anyway, yeah, bye.